Every couple of years, NVIDIA launches an extremely expensive, extremely powerful graphics card that brings PC gaming into a new generation. That is what the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5090 ultimately is, but the way it brings next generation performance is unconventional to say the least. Because in a lot of games, the performance uplift over the RTX 4090 isn't quite as steep as you'd expect, at least when DLSS and ray tracing are taken out of consideration. However, with the next generation of NVIDIA's DLSS for both upscaling and frame generation, we get leaps in image quality and performance that feel even greater than what we see with a typical graphics generation. How much of an upgrade the NVIDIA RTX 5090 is going to be for you then is ultimately going to depend on the games you play, the resolution you play those games at, and whether you're okay with an AI algorithm generating extra frames. For a lot of people, playing games on anything less than a 4K monitor with a 240Hz refresh rate, this upgrade simply is not going to make a lot of sense. But if you do have a high-end display, these AI-generated frames are going to feel like a taste of the future. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5090 is built on Blackwell. NVIDIA's high-end architecture that's already powering the data centers and supercomputers behind many of the most popular AI models. That should give you an idea of what the RTX 5090 is especially good at. But NVIDIA didn't neglect the, well, non-AI parts of the card either. With the 5090, NVIDIA found a way to shove more streaming multiprocessors into the same amount of graphics processing clusters, which means more CUDA cores. 21,760 up from 16,384 in the RTX 4090. That makes up for a 32% uplift in the amount of shader cores over the previous generation, and is where a bulk of the raw gaming performance comes from. Each SM also has four tensor cores and one RT core, just like its predecessor. That means you get 680 tensor cores and 170 RT cores, compared to 512 and 128 respectively for the RTX 4090. The fifth generation tensor cores are tailor-made to boost AI performance, with this generation adding support for FP4 operations, which should make AI workloads less dependent on VRAM. All of this silicon is coupled with 32 gigabytes of GDDR7 VRAM or video memory. This is a generational shift from the GDDR6X memory in the RTX 4090 and should be faster and more power efficient than the previous generation. But because the RTX 5090 requires a staggering 575 watts of power, a huge increase over the already power hungry 4090, power efficiency isn't exactly Nvidia's main goal with this graphics card. Because the new tensor cores are more efficient, NVIDIA shifted the entire DLSS algorithm to run on a transformer neural network, or TNN, rather than a convolutional neural network, or CNN. This shift won't necessarily improve your frame rate when you enable DLSS, but NVIDIA claims it will improve image quality and mitigate issues like ghosting and other unwanted artifacts. NVIDIA did more than just make an under the hood change to the way DLSS works. Team Green also introduced multi-frame generation, which takes the frame gen tech introduced with the RTX 4090, makes it more efficient and smooth, and allows it to generate multiple frames off each rendered image. This drastically improves frame rate, but should probably only be enabled if you're already getting a decent frame rate, just like the last generation version. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5090 requires 575 watts of power, which is much more than the 450 watts of the RTX 4090. More power inherently means more heat, which means increasingly powerful cooling solutions are needed. Looking back at the RTX 4090 and even the RTX 3090, the Founders Editions were these giant triple slot graphics cards that took up a ton of room and straight up wouldn't fit in some PC cases. Before we saw the RTX 5090, we were expecting something even bigger and more unwieldy. However, somehow, it's smaller. NVIDIA was able to make a 575 watt graphics card fit in a dual slot chassis with dual fan configuration, and it just works. Throughout our reviewer Jackie's time with the RTX 5090, which included both our standard testing suite and playing games with DLSS 4 enabled to test multi-frame generation, the temperature maxed out at around 86 degrees Celsius, even while its power consumption peaked at 578 watts. That's a high temperature to be sure, and higher than the RTX 4090's 80 degrees Celsius, but it's not high enough to throttle, and that's all that matters. 
When Nvidia revealed the RTX 5090, it claimed that it could boost performance by as much as eight times. The actual number isn't that high, but the RTX 5090 can deliver extremely high frame rates in the most demanding games, but not exactly through traditional rendering. Because while the RTX 5090 does deliver a decent increase in raw rasterization performance, the real next generation benefit is in its ability to generate extra frames to increase your frame rate. DLSS 4 introduces multi-frame generation, a next-gen version of the frame generation introduced with DLSS 3 and the RTX 4090. But it's more than just using the same method to just produce more frames. And the secret behind it is a new AI management processor, or AMP core, in the RTX 5090, along with other RTX 5000 graphics cards. The AMP allows the graphics card to essentially assign work to different parts of the GPU, something that was traditionally handled by your CPU. But because it's physically located on the GPU, it's able to do this much more efficiently. When the RTX 5090 hits store shelves on January 30th, DLSS 4 will work in a wide array of PC games that already support DLSS 3 frame generation. However, while working on this review, we only had access to two games with this technology enabled, and both were on beta builds, Cyberpunk 2077 and Star Wars Outlaws. Still, we were surprised with how well it worked. In Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K on the Ray Tracing Overdrive preset, with the LSS on performance mode, the RTX 5090 gets 94 frames per second. That's not bad for a game with full ray tracing. When we turned on DLSS two times frame gen, the same as supported by the RTX 4090, that frame rate increased to 162 frames per second. That's a two times improvement over just plain old DLSS. However, when we cranked the frame generation to four times, that's three AI frames per rendered frame, that number went all the way up to 286 frames per second, more than most 4K displays can actually render. It's a similar story with Star Wars Outlaws. Playing at 4K with all the settings cranked up to max, we were able to get up to around 300 frames per second with DLSS 4 enabled, and that's up from about 120 frames per second without frame generation. Given those frame rates, we were straight up expecting to see artifacts and weird spikes of lag. However, we only really saw one broken texture in Star Wars Outlaws, and it's something you wouldn't have even noticed if you weren't actively looking for problems. It's hard to believe, but multi-frame generation actually does work. You just need to have an extremely high-end 4K display to benefit from it, at least with the RTX 5090. It's easy to write off this performance as fake frames, but you wouldn't necessarily be wrong, especially because you need good baseline performance to make it a good experience but it is going to be genuinely useful for anyone with a high refresh, high resolution display. It's also important to keep in mind that we were only able to test it in a handful of games. Nvidia claims that 75 games will support DLSS 4 when the RTX 5090 hits store shelves on January 30th, but there's a decent possibility that it won't work flawlessly in at least one of those games. For the time being though, it looks like it works extremely well. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5090 is an incredibly powerful graphics card, but testing this thing was a journey. In 3D Mark, the RTX 5090 proved itself to provide a generational improvement over the RTX 4090 in terms of raw performance. However, things get a little more complicated when we test actual games. In the vast majority of games, the RTX 5090 is bottlenecked by our CPU even at 4K, despite it being paired with the Ryzen 7 9800X3D, the fastest gaming processor on the market right now. For most people who already have a high-end graphics card, upgrading to this $1,999 GPU isn't gonna make a world of difference. The games just aren't there yet. This is a graphics card you buy to set yourself up for future PC games like The Witcher 4. We also wanna note that we did not enable DLSS 4 for any of these comparative benchmarks and everything was tested on the public drivers available at the time. That means all non-5090 NVIDIA cards were tested on driver version 566.36, and all AMD cards were tested on AMD Adrenaline 24.12.1. All games were tested on their latest public builds too. In 3D Mark, the RTX 5090 is up to 42% faster than the RTX 4090. In the Speedway benchmark, the RTX 5090 scores 14,399 points to the RTX 4090's 10,130, making for a 42% performance uplift. 
Similarly in Port Royal, the ray tracing test, the RTX 5090 scores 36,946 points to the 4090's 25,997 points, which is also a 42% performance leap. What's more impressive is how far Team Green has come since the RTX 3090. That graphics card got 5,619 points in Speedway and 13,738 points in Port Royal, meaning anyone that skipped the last generation can get a 2.5 times performance jump. That's just 3D Mark though, and not necessarily reflective of real world gaming performance. In Call of Duty Black Ops 6, however, we started to see the big issue with the RTX 5090 in today's games, a severe CPU bottleneck. At 4K extreme settings with DLSS set to performance, the RTX 5090 gets 161 frames per second compared to 146 frames per second from the RTX 4090. That's just a 10% performance difference and definitely not what I'd call next generation performance increase. However, when we look back at the RTX 3090, the four year old graphics card gets 91 frames per second, which means a nearly two times performance increase. What's wild is that the RTX 5090 even shows signs of CPU bottleneck in Cyberpunk 2077, one of the most demanding PC games on the market right now. At 4K with the ray tracing ultra preset and DLSS set to performance, the RTX 5090 gets 125 frames per second compared to 112 frames per second from the RTX 4090 with the same settings. Similarly to Black Ops 6, this is just a 10% performance increase. That scaling just gets worse at lower resolutions, though with the RTX 5090 getting 153 frames per second at 1440p and 156 frames per second at 1080p. We tested Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition with DLSS disabled because it's the only upscaling solution in that game, and we need to get an honest comparison with AMD cards. This makes it one of the most demanding tests in our suite and gives the RTX 5090 a chance to stretch its legs a bit. At 4K with the Extreme preset, the RTX 5090 gets 95 frames per second compared to 76 frames per second from the RTX 4090 and 44 frames per second from the Radeon RX 7900 XTX. But even without the upscaling, the RTX 5090 only gets a 25% improvement over the RTX 4090, even if it more than doubles the 39 frames per second from the RTX 3090. Red Dead Redemption 2 is getting up there in years, but it's still a gorgeous game. At 4K with every setting maxed out and DLSS set to performance mode, the RTX 5090 gets 167 frames per second compared to 151 from the RTX 4090 and 92 frames per second from the RTX 3090. That means in this game, which admittedly doesn't even use ray tracing, the RTX 5090 gets a paltry 6% performance uplift over the RTX 4090. Total War Warhammer 3 is an interesting test these days because it doesn't support ray tracing or upscaling and gives a clear picture on raw rasterization performance. The RTX 5090 impresses here, delivering 147 frames per second to the RTX 4090's 107 frames per second. That's a 35% performance uplift and close to potential performance difference demonstrated in 3D Mark. However, it's still a far cry from the 67% performance difference enjoyed by the RTX 4090 over the 3090. Black Myth Wukong, like Cyberpunk 2077, is an extremely demanding game that will push any GPU to its limits. The RTX 5090, however, averaged 104 frames per second at 4K with the cinematic preset and DLSS set to 40%. The RTX 4090 with identical settings got 84 frames per second. That's a 20% uplift in favor of the RTX 5090. In Forza Horizon 5, the RTX 5090 averaged 260 frames per second compared to 210 frames per second from the RTX 4090, which is essentially in the margin of error. This is an aging game to be sure, but the CPU bottleneck means there's essentially no difference between these two cards at this resolution. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5090 has officially taken the performance crown from the RTX 4090 but with less force than previous generations. When it comes to traditional non-AI gaming performance, the RTX 5090 provides one of the smallest generational uplifts in recent memory. That's not to say the RTX 5090 is a bad graphics card. No matter how you slice it, the RTX 5090 is now the fastest graphics card on the consumer market. And that's not nothing. The problem is that a lot of games can't really take advantage of the extra power offered by the Blackwell GPU. 
That's something that will absolutely change over time, but it also means there's little reason for someone with an RTX 4090 to upgrade to the new hotness. Instead, the Nvidia GeForce RTX 5090 is betting its existence on the future of AI-powered gaming. DLSS 4 uses AI to greatly increase frame rates, which is definitely a sight to behold. This graphics card is therefore best for gamers that want to be on the cutting edge and are willing to bet $1,999, at least, on an AI gaming future. For everything else, the RTX 4090 is gonna be more than powerful enough for the next few years. And for more on all things graphics cards, make sure you stay tuned to IGN.